Let's start by summarizing the series tests that we've covered so far in these videos. We've got the harmonic series and the divergence test. Then we have the series from the last video, telescoping, geometric, and the integral test. We're going to add one more to the list today. It's called P series. If you look back at your notes, you'll see that we had this extra example at the end of class when we did improper integrals. We wrote out the different cases for P greater than 1, P less than 1, P equal to 1, and we wrote out all of the details. Again, check your notes, and what we found is that this integral diverges if p is less than or equal to 1, and converges if p is greater than 1. Now that's an integral. We're doing series, but we have the integral test from the previous video. So let's just take the x and turn it into an n, and take the integral, turn it into a summation, and the 1 to infinity turns into the indexing, n equals 1 to infinity. As long as this improper integral diverges or converges, this series will diverge or converge according to the same constraints on the p-value. A couple of quick examples. The series 1 over square root of n. This is n to the 1 half power, so my p-value is 1 half. According to the rules here, if p is less than 1, then the series diverges. So this one, it diverges. Another example, the 1 over n. I know that you remember this is the harmonic series, but actually you can do this with p-series too. This is like n to the 1 power, so my p-value is equal to 1. And according to these rules, if p is equal to to 1, then the series diverges. And finally, let's look at one with a little bit of a tricky power. This cube root to the fourth power is a 4 over 3 for the power all combined. So the p-value here is 4 over 3. Since 4 over 3 is greater than 1, this one converges. So those are some examples with p-series. As you can see, I've added it to our list here. We've got harmonic and divergence test, the last three that we covered in the previous video, and now we we also have P series. The main topic for this video is comparison of one series to another series. The first type of comparison is a direct comparison. Here are the general rules for a direct comparison. Comparison tests only work for terms that are positive, so that's the first condition. If I have an is less than or equal to bn, that means that an series is less than or equal to the bn series. And as long as we establish some inequality in the beginning of the problem, then we can use the the following rules. If the bigger series converges, that is, if the blue series here is equal to an actual finite number, then the red series, which is somewhere smaller than that, would have to also be equal to some finite number. So if the bigger series converges, then the smaller series must also converge. Similarly, if the smaller series in red here, if this one diverges to infinity, then the BN series is even bigger than that. So the BN series would have to be bigger than infinity, so the BN series would have to also diverge to infinity. Let's look at an example. The first thing that we do for a comparison is just look at the lead terms. The biggest thing in the denominator is the 2 to the n. The biggest thing in the numerator, well, there's not much in the numerator, it's just 1, right? So looking at the lead terms, we're going to compare this to just 1 over 2 to the n. Now, how are these two things related to each other? other, what's the inequality that goes in between these terms? Notice that the difference between the left quantity and the right quantity is that the left one has a plus 3 in the denominator. What does that mean in terms of an inequality between these two? It's a less than because the quantity on the left has a bigger denominator. If the denominator is bigger, then overall this quantity on the left is smaller in comparison to the 1 over 2 to the n series. Now let's look at the simpler version, just the summation of 1 over 2 to the n. Well, that is a geometric series with the r value equal to a half. A half is less than 1, so using the rules for a geometric series, this summation of 1 over 2 to the n converges. Now using our comparison, if I have the bigger series converging to an actual number, then the series in question here would have to be smaller than that. So therefore, by the comparison, the smaller series also converges. Let's do another one. Again, the strategy here is to just take the lead terms, the biggest powers from the numerator and the denominator, and that's how we get our simplified series over here. Now, what is the relationship between our original series and our simplified series? What is the inequality that would go in between these two? In other words, which one's bigger, which one's smaller? I hope that you figured it out. The left series is bigger. You can take a look here. The new 
numerator is bigger on the left, so that indicates that it's bigger, and also it has a smaller denominator. Remember, if the denominator is smaller, then overall it's a bigger quantity. Okay, so now let's work on our simplified version over here, just the n squared over n to the 5 halves. Canceling the powers here, I get 1 over n to the 1 half. Oh, that's a p series. Great. I have rules for that. If p is equal to 1 half, that's less than 1, and the p series rule says that that diverges. So now, using our rules for comparison, I know that this series on the right diverges to infinity, and the original series is even bigger than that, even bigger than infinity. So therefore, the original series must also diverge. Okay, we've got one more thing on the agenda for this video, which is the limit comparison test. This is when direct comparison doesn't work, and there's a different alternative called limit comparison. Here are the rules. Here's how it works. As usual, like we said for the previous test, comparison only works when the terms are positive. Keep that in mind. And the limit comparison test says that if I divide a n over b n, and I take the limit as n goes to infinity of the ratio of the terms of the series, if that limit as n goes to infinity is either not zero or not infinity, then I like to say that that means that the two series are, quote, comparable. Picture this limit with a ratio. If the denominator were like way, way bigger, then it would go to zero. Or if the numerator were way, way bigger, it would go to infinity. The fact that it doesn't go to zero and doesn't go to infinity means that the an and the bn are kind of roughly on par with each other. Neither one of them is getting very much bigger in comparison to the other one. So neither one of these is kind of dominating the other if it's not equal to zero and not equal to infinity. So what that means is that the two series are quote, comparable. And in that case that they are comparable, they either both converge or both diverge. Let's do an example. Similar to the previous comparison tests, we are doing the lead term for the numerator and the lead term for the denominator in order to get our simplified series here. Now let's think about this. Question mark. What's the inequality that would go in between these two series? Check out the numerator. The numerator is bigger on the left, indicating that that maybe the left one is bigger, but the denominator on the left is also bigger. Remember, if the denominator gets bigger, that means that overall it seems like it's getting smaller. So we have two competing interests here, and I really cannot complete this question mark. This is why the direct comparison does not work in this case, is because the numerator is indicating that I should have a greater than sign here. The denominator is indicating that I should have a less than sign here. Okay, maybe a direct comparison comparison isn't the right way to go. Okay, it's just not possible here, which is why we have the limit comparison test. So let's do that instead. So what we're going to do in order to do the limit comparison test is we're going to take the terms of one series here and divide by the terms of the other series. Why the heck are we doing that? Remember what it says on the previous slides. If I divide the terms of one series by the terms of the other series, and then I do this limit, as long as I don't get zero and I don't get infinity, that means that this one is comparable to that one. So they roughly are on par with each other. They do similar things when it comes to convergence and divergence. So let's work on this limit. I've got fractions within fractions, so I'm simplifying those by flipping the denominator. Now let's just move terms around. Remember, you can multiply in any order, so I can switch the numerators in order to collect like terms. Now, inside the parentheses here, I've got pi to the n plus 1 over pi to the n. That is a limit which approaches 1. One way of showing that is using L'Hopital's rule because it's essentially the numerators approaching infinity and the denominators approaching infinity. So if I take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, the plus 1 goes away, and then I get the same thing on the top and the bottom, which cancels to just equal 1. Actually, the exact same logic works over here. If you use L'Hopital's rule, you can show that the limit of these parentheses is also equal to 1. Combining these 1 times 1, we get a total answer of 1. All right. 1 is not equal to 0, and it's not equal to infinity, so yes, the two series 
here that we have in our problem, they are comparable. Whatever this one does, that one does. So let's make our conclusions. The simplified series here is a geometric series with the r value being pi over 9, which is less than 1. So if the simplified series does converge, then the original series, which is comparable, is also going to be convergent. Thank <laughs> you.